Over the past few months, I've built over 50 AI sales agents using Flowwise and VoiceFlow in combination. And what are the results of using these two systems combined? It allows you to build better, more complex and nuanced systems as a whole with these two components working seamlessly together. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to connect Flowwise with VoiceFlow, integrate those two systems seamlessly. I'm gonna show you a ton of different use cases where the system makes sense. And the best part is at the end of the video, I'm gonna provide the template for you guys completely for free. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So before we get into specifics, the first question is why should you even combine Flowwise and VoiceFlow? When and why does this make sense? The first thing is customization and flexibility. You're, you're able to build powerful agents on the Flowwise side and then use the logic and other integration benefits from VoiceFlow. So they complement each other very nicely where, where Flowwise is a pure agent builder. VoiceFlow allows you to build logic and pathways. And I'm gonna show you guys more on that later in this video. Second is it's easy to use. Both of them are visual and no code slash low code friendly. I have tutorial videos for both of these solutions on this YouTube channel, which you can check out. And it simply lets you build and iterate these systems very quickly. And finally, scalability. Both Flowwise and VoiceFlow allow you to scale up your usage very easily. With Flowwise, it's self-hosted. So all you need to do is upgrade your hosting to allow more resources. With VoiceFlow, you don't have to worry about scalability at all. Now let's set up the Flowwise and VoiceFlow integration. The first thing is the requirements. Number one, you need a VoiceFlow account. Link is down below in the description. Sign up for VoiceFlow and you need a working Flowwise instance. I'm gonna link the Flowwise playlist up here where I show in the very first video how exactly you can self-host Flowwise and have it up and running within five to 10 minutes. On top of that, you should obviously be familiar with how to use each platform, at least at a basic level. The second part is the Flowwise setup where you actually get to set up your Flowwise agent, build out the flow, and then get the API URL, which you are then going to add into VoiceFlow. So inside of VoiceFlow, you're gonna get the template, which I'm gonna share for you guys for free, and you simply need to insert the URL into that template. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do that in just a second. So let's go through these two steps, the second and the third, one by one. First things first, I'm gonna to go to Flowwise and I created a quick AI sales agent demo. As you can see, I've built a tool agent, given access to memory, given it access to Quadrant, which is a vector store, which is gonna be used as our knowledge base for the agent, as well as connected it to OpenAI so that it actually has the ability to respond to messages. If we simply write a message here, we're gonna be able to see that it actually does respond back and that it's a working AI sales agent. Now, in order to actually connect this, what we're gonna to need to do is click on the blue icons in the top, simply click on curl, and here we need to copy this URL. We simply copy the URL and we're gonna save it because we're gonna use it in just a second when we connect it inside of VoiceFlow. Now in VoiceFlow, I've opened up the Flowwise X VoiceFlow template, and this template is available for free at school.com slash Omnifusion. The link's down below in the description. The template can be downloaded there for free. All you need to do is import it into your VoiceFlow account. Once you open the project, this is what you're gonna see. You simply go ahead and click on workflows and on start, and it's gonna open up the actual template. It's a very, very simple flow, so there's nothing complicated here. Basically, VoiceFlow captures the message from the user, and it then sends it off to Flowwise. You simply click on this request, and up here where it says URL, we will paste in the URL which we just got from Flowwise. As soon as you've added the URL here, this is actually going to be a working API call. You then go up here, paste your URL as well, and it should be now fully working. So we're just gonna run a quick test for this. We're gonna click on run, run test, give it one second, and it's now ready. I'm gonna say hello, and we're gonna give it a second to do the API call, get the response back, and it's gonna say, hello, how can I assist you today? So as you can see, we've successfully integrated the VoiceFlow interface with our Flowwise agent. Now that we have everything connected, let's cover some practical use cases for when this even makes sense, because right now you may be asking yourself, okay, if I have this and I just ask a question and I get the response back, but there's no additional stuff happening in VoiceFlow, why does this even make sense? First is that you can combine a chatbot with an AI agent. So Flowwise itself is an AI agent, which you have a conversation with, but it doesn't have any of the logic. 
So with VoiceFlow, for example, you have the ability to go to your canvas, add logics such as conditions, add additional API calls, functions, etc. And for example, you can add buttons, which is something that you cannot do inside of Flowwise. So uh, combining these two elements is a very, very effective way to use these two systems. Secondly, you can use a use case such as smart response filtering, where you can automatically screen AI generated responses to ensure they're helpful, accurate, and appropriate before sending it to the user. So for example, if you're building a sales agent with which he has to answer questions, you can check if the answer is correct before you actually send it out. And if it's not correct, you can notify a team member to take over the conversation. Or for a customer support agent, this is even more useful because you don't want to give an incorrect answer to a customer in support. So you can simply check the reply before actually sending it out. And I'm going to show you guys how to build this in just a second. And the third one is sentiment analysis. So oftentimes it's very important to actually keep track of whether a user who's using your AI system is actually happy with the response and sort of track positive and negative feedback from the users. And you can do that as well when you combine these two systems very seamlessly. So let's cover it one by one, chatbot plus AI agent combination, combining these elements. So for example, if I wanted to, at the very beginning, instead of me having to send the first message, we can actually go here, we can have a message, we can say, hi, how can I help? We can then capture that message or even add buttons. So for example, we could add a button right here where we could say, um, I need support or I need sales. And based on this, we could, for example, even redirect to different agents. So for example, if they say, I need sales, we can redirect to our conversational sales agent and we could make a different Flowwise agent for support, which we would redirect to if they say, I need support. And in order to do that, we would simply duplicate this right here and we would redirect to a different one. All you would have to do is replace the URL right here and as soon as the API call is a success, we simply send out the message. And in this case, you could reroute based on buttons if that is something that you want to do in your use case. The second one is smart response filtering. So let's say I want to screen the response to make sure that it is helpful before I send it out. In that case, let me actually remove these extra steps and go back to the initial template. In this case, if we actually want to make sure that we check the response first, we would add something in between these two nodes. And what we could do, for example, is we could have a set AI card where we can use AI to actually save an output into a variable. So what we could do is we could say uh, the AI just responded. And obviously you would have to work on this prompt a little bit more, but you could say the AI just responded to this message. Here you would add the message from the user, which is last utterance by saying this. And here you would add the response variable, which is the response that we just got back from the API call to Flowwise. If the answer is helpful and positive, please say continue. If the answer is not helpful or doesn't assist the user, please say stop. Only say stop or continue. Do not add anything else to your message. We can then save this into a variable where we can create a new variable, for example, and call it filtering replies. We save it into that variable. In the prompt settings, you can also add a system prompt, for example, and decide which system you want to use, like, for example, GPT-4.0, put down the temperature, etc. And you can now use this by adding a condition right after where we are basically going to say if the variable which is filtering replies contains continue then we actually send the message if it doesn't we could for example do a api call and notify someone from our team by doing a post request for example etc so this is a very useful use case as well so let's actually test this if I say, hello, how are you doing? As you can see, since we have the debug mode added, first it did the API call to Flowwise. It got the response and saved it here. And then it actually did the AI set task where the output was 
continue, so filtering replies was set to continue, which means that it continued. If it wouldn't have been helpful, it would say stop. Now, let's try and run a different test where we're gonna try and make it not be able to continue. So I'm gonna make up some things and ask it about it. So what does the company integrations offer and when was it founded? As you can see, in this case, it actually did not send the message to the user because the answer was, I'm sorry, but I don't have any information about a company named da -da -da integrations. Then it actually did the AI set task and set the reply for filtering replies. So it set the variable to stop, which means it actually stopped the conversation. So this is a very good example of how you can use this specific use case to have smart response filtering. And the third one is sentiment analysis. It would work in a very similar way. So it would also work with a set AI label. Just in this case, we would save it, for example, to a different variable, which could be, let's say, sentiment analysis. We would create that variable. Oh, have a typo in there. That's okay. Um, and basically we would say the AI just respond to this message by saying this, if the user is happy with the current conversation to this message, let's actually specify from the user. If the user is happy with the current conversation, say happy. If the user is unhappy, say unhappy. Only say happy or unhappy. Do not add anything else to your message. So by adding this in, we can now adjust this. We're gonna change the variable to sentiment analysis. And if it contains happy, we do X. And if it contains not happy, we do something else. In this case, we're actually gonna send the response either way. So we don't wanna stop the AI from sending a response. We just wanna save the sentiment. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna send the response and then we're gonna check if it contains happy, we can do an API call, which saves, for example, into a Google sheet, into a CRM, whatever you want to use, saves that the person is happy. And if it's not happy, we're gonna save that it's not happy into a CRM. So we can, for example, have a counter in a Google sheet to track how many people are happy and how many aren't. So let's actually test this real quick. I'm gonna say this conversation is terrible, which should obviously trigger an unhappy reply. So we're gonna wait a second. And we're going to get the reply back from Flowwise, which actually connected. And in this case, the sentiment analysis was unhappy. Sentiment analysis unhappy. Um, but in this case, it was rerouted indirectly. So I believe we have a mistake here. Sentiment. Ah, we have contains. We need to have is happy. So that's my mistake. So now if we try it again with is happy, it's going to redirect correctly. This conversation is terrible. And as you can see, we got the reply back, but the sentiment analysis is unhappy. So because it wasn't happy, it went down this path and we can now save that result. So those are just a couple quick use cases on how you can actually use voice flow and flow wise in combination. There's obviously a lot more that you can do, but I think you guys get the idea. And as you start expanding on this, you will get more creative by yourself to be able to build better solutions by combining the two. Now, what are the next steps for you after watching this video to be able to implement this inside of your existing AI agent workflows? Number one, get the free template. Join at school.com slash Omnifusion to access this template and a lot more templates and resources from our past videos. Number two, please show some love, like, subscribe to the channel, and let me know if you have any questions or thoughts in the comments down below. And number three, work with us. If you're a business owner and you're looking to get AI sales systems implemented inside of your business, please feel free to visit omnifusion.ai and schedule a call if it's a good fit. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found some value in this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day.